I am very pleased to bring you a brand new lab. We've never run this one in the course before, and it's really going to help you keep your port cost and your root path cost separate. We were going to do it as a walkthrough, and I just looked at it and said, let's do this live. So I went down and tore a bunch of cables out and rearranged some stuff, and you'll see the new topology here in just a moment. We do have three switches involved in this one. But first, I want to introduce you to these terms, because if it's your first time at this particular rodeo, uh, the terms are related and they even sound a little bit alike. You got port costs and you got path costs. So we need to be crystal clear on the differences here for the exam. Now, every STP enabled port on our switches, every single one that we've seen so far, even if it's been in blocking mode, it has an assigned port cost. And that cost is used to arrive at the switch's root path cost, the RPC. Now, the port cost itself is strictly a local value. It is not advertised to upstream switches or downstream switches or anywhere else. And the faster the port, the lower the port cost. I'm going to show you a couple of port costs later in a table, but the one you should really be familiar with, especially here, is the default port cost for a fast Ethernet port, and that is 19. And actually, we'll just go ahead and verify that here on switch 1. Let's show spanning VLAN 1, and we've seen all the root ID and bridge ID info and worked through that. But right down here, there's the cost, and this is the STP port cost. And for again, for a fast Ethernet port, that is always going to be 19. Now, the root path cost, this is a cumulative value, and it is reflecting the overall cost for the switch to reach the root via its root port. Now, the configuration BPDU carries that RPC value, and that cost increments as that BPDU is forwarded throughout the network. So this is why I've kind of hit you over the head once or twice, and I'm about to do it again with the fact that the root switch originates this config BPDU and all the non-roots are forwarding it. Because it sounds like you're just, you know, really splitting hairs there. It's like, you know, really, is there a difference? Well, as we're about to see, there's a big difference. And again, the port cost isn't advertised anywhere. It is locally significant only. And the root path cost is cumulative and it is going to be advertised via these BPDUs. Here is the network that we're going to work with in this particular lab. Switch 1 is still our root. Switch 2 and 3, they're different switches, but they got the name Switch 2 and Switch 3. But Switch 1 is still the root. And the thing to watch here is that we don't have redundancy between any two particular switches. We don't need it for this lab because we're concentrating on the port cost and the root path cost. So switch one and switch two are trunking. Switch two and switch three are trunking. I did not put the interface numbers there because it really doesn't matter, but we will see it on the live equipment as well. I want you to get used to getting that info yourself so you can see on switch one, it's fast 11. We did move a cable too. So right now, let's see what's going on with this RPC. Now, when switch one originates the config BPDU, it's going to have an RPC of zero, which makes perfect sense because, you know, switch one is the root. There shouldn't really be a, a cost to get to the root when you're already there. The most important thing I can mention about these BPDUs is this. The root path cost increments as the BPDU is received by a switch, not as it leaves. Not as it leaves. <laughs> this is very important because you could look at this and say, okay, you know, if I'm adding up the RPC and I'm assuming these are all fast Ethernet ports, which they are, they all have a default cost of 19, which they do, then I'm sitting here looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, what is the RPC uh, as it leaves switch one? I need to go see what that port cost is. No, you don't because it doesn't matter. The RPC only increments as the BPDU is received not as, as it is sent. We'll actually verify that, and I want to show you another great little command. This one gets overlooked a little bit. It's a variation on show spanning VLAN, because you do have some options here, and time does not allow us to go in through every single one. But a really good one to use here is root. And this is a good chunk of information, because first off, it gives you the name of the VLAN in particular, and we didn't change the name, so you see the default name VLAN0001. Under root ID, you see the exact order of that priority and MAC address. So that verifies what we were saying earlier. It's 32769 in front of the MAC address. The root cost, as you see there, is zero. 
Hello, Mac, hello time, max age for delay, all at their default values. And why don't I have anything under root port? I want to hear everybody answer this question out loud. I don't care where you are. Where? Why don't I see a root port? Because I'm on the root switch, right? So we are on the root. We have a root cost of zero. The BPDU is going out to all the trunks. And the only trunk we have is the one down to switch two. So let's take a quick graphic look at what happens. And again, the in incoming RPC is zero. The receiving port cost is 19. So when we check the path cost on switch two, we should see 19. So let's go over to switch two and do just that. And there it is. So you get the root ID, and this is a great command to run, you know, along with show spanning VLAN by itself, because it's given us the bid of the root right there, but we also see the root cost is now incremented to 19. And again, hello time, max age four delay, they're all still at their defaults as you would expect, and it even tells you what the root port is, and in this case, it's fast ethernet 011. Let's go ahead and run show spanning VLAN one and see what we see. And you look at this and you might think, well, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to see a port in blocking mode here somewhere? Well, no, because you know there are no potential loops in this particular network. You know, we've got one trunk from switch one to switch two, we have another trunk from switch two to switch three, so we're not gonna see any ports put into blocking mode here. So we know the root port is 011, and we're looking good there, and those are a designated port that's the one going to switch three. And that also has a cost of 19, but does that matter? Does that matter in our calculations? No, it does not. Because again, that RPC only increments as the BPDU is received. So speaking of receiving, switch three is going to receive the BPDU that switch two then forwards, and it's going to have an RPC now of 19. And switch three receives it, and we're going to, that's next lesson, switch three is going to receive it and we should see an RPC of 38, right? Absolutely. So let's go down to switch three and see what we can see. And there you go, there's your root cost of 38 right in the middle. Again, it gives you the full root ID, the full bid of the root ID, gives you the root cost of 38 as we expect hello, max, and forward, all of the defaults, and it also shows you what your local root port is. So this is another great command to verify what a network map is telling you, whether it's on the exam, job interview, uh, or real-world networking. If you're just looking at it and saying, you know, well, let's figure out what the root port is. Show spanning VLAN 1 would give it to you, but so would show spanning VLAN 1 root. I really like this command because it gives you that cumulative root cost, and that's what we're really interested in. So we are clear then on our port cost and our root path cost. We've got that down. Now, one thing we didn't have in this particular lab is the choice that between two ports or more for a root port. And what I mean is, let's go back to the two switch lab for just a moment that we used in the last video. We had two trunks between switches one and two. Switch one was the root, so switch two had to make a decision which one of these ports is going to be my root? And we saw that it was the lower numbered one. Maybe there was a reason for that. I have a good feeling there is. When we come back, I'll have the original two switch topology back. We're going to dig into that a little bit more, maybe change some port costs. But at the same time, we will learn exactly how the switch chose which port to put into blocking mode to prevent a loop. And that is coming up next.